When a primatologist Akira Suzuki began studying show monkeys in the 1950s, he found that they often roamed out of the mountains to feed in apple orchards. After a decade observing this behavior, Suzuki began to feed the monkeys in their mountains habitats by providing them with soybeans to eat. The monkeys no longer raided the orchards, where Suzuki began his work. Twenty-three snow monkeys lived in the region he studied. The population today is 270 snow monkeys and is expected to continue growing. Qu question, which one of the following claims is most strongly supported by the information above? So we came to the information on the snow monkeys. We considered that the uh, research done in the 1950s about the living conditions and the food they were eating. Snow monkeys roamed out of their mountain habitat. Snow monkeys also eat apples, orchards out of the mountains. Snow monkeys fed on soybeans in their mountain habitat. Snow monkeys no longer raided apple orchards. Snow monkeys no longer left mountains living conditions. Conclusion, snow monkeys population increased and continued. So based on this information that we have, we're going to go ahead and consider the uh, choice A, and then we're going to go from there as which one strongly supports this information. Uh, for choice A, snow monkeys do not feed outside of their mountain habitats when food is readily available within it. Uh, yes, this claim of snow monkeys eating food that is accessible is supported by this passage. Let's see if any of this other answer choice is better. B. For snow monkeys, soybeans provide more complete nutrition than other beans. No, this information wasn't mentioned about the uh, nutrition benefits on soybeans and the stimulus, so we're going to have to remove that one. C. In feeding soybeans to the monkeys, Suzuki did not intend to provoke the phenomenon of population growth that resulted. No, po the population growth is not intend an intended phenomenon that the growth resulted. So, compare choice A. Choice A is going to be better than choice C, so we're going to have to remove choice C out. D. Snow monkeys eat apples only if there is no other fruit to eat. No, the assumption to be made by eating apples only is not that. It's not that. This is not the assumption to be made. Um, only the apples. So we're gonna remove it. E, feeding soybeans to snow monkeys has proved to be an environmental unsound policy. No. Unsound policy is not safe in poor conditions, which is not. Uh, what the stimulus is mentioning. So by proselytization and by going by the best choice here, we came to choice A. And that was for the snow monkeys do not feed outside of their mountain habitats when food is readily available within it. This claim right here will be the best information to be supported by this passage, by this information up above here about the conclusion. Body temperature can be estimated by the relative proportion of two oxygen isotopes in bone. Such estimates derived from dinosaur fossils suggest that the dinosaur had nearly the same body temperature in their limbs and as in the rest of their bodies. Typically, the core body temperature of cold-blooded animals today is much higher than the body temperature in their limbs. Thus, dinosaurs were probably warm-blooded. So, this uh, passage is going to be where you consider a question along with it, which the following if you most seriously weakens the argument. So, basically, with this information, let's, let's go ahead and figure out which one weakens the uh, stimulus. A. Large, warm-blooded animals keep their core body temperature slightly higher than the body temperature in their limbs? No, because it will contradict the information on amphibious animals. B. The fossilization process introduces changes to the bones such that their original isotopes, oxygen isotopes ratios cannot be predicted. That would, yes, um, weaken the statement, meaning that changes in bones cannot be accurately really to calculate the prediction of oxygen isotope ratios. C. Oxygen was more abundant in Earth's atmosphere during the period in which the dinosaurs lived. No, I kind of consider this uh, irrelevant since comparing the uh, 
oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere to the oxygen in the bones. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. D. Small, warm-blooded animals like mice tend to have more uniform body temperatures than do large, warm-blooded animals like elephant. No, contradicts the information on animal body temperatures because they were going for the difference between animals and the um, warm-blooded versus cold-blooded. E. Warm-blooded animals are more active and use more oxygen than cold-blooded animals. No, it does not explain the body temperature differences at all. So, choice B. The phosphorylation process introduces changes to the bones such that the original oxygen isotope ratios cannot be predicted is the best match and the best answer for this question. A recent study has found that surprisingly the risk of serious injuries to work is higher in industries that are monitored by government safety inspectors than in industries that are not so monitored. Why one of the following, if true, most helps to explain the surprising finding described above? A. Government safety inspectors not only monitor but also train employees of the inspected firms to follow safe practices. No, because accidents are still happening at the workplace and are very high. Government safety inspectors do not have the authority to enforce safety regulations no because government is affiliated with these safety inspections c only those industries with inherently high risk of job injuries are monitored by government safety inspectors yes this will explain why the industry monitored by government is occurring with the high level risk injuries and why they're um, affiliated in the category with the government inspectors d workers behave especially costly when they believe that their performance is being monitored by government safety inspectors. Slightly less, but no evidence to support or not mention in the stimulus about the uh, people being more cautiously when they believe they're being government safety inspected monitored. E. Some of the industries that are being monitored by government safety inspectors have much lower rates of injury than do other industries that are also so monitored. No contradicts stimulus and goes against the information on the stimulus as well. So choice C, only those industries with inherently high risk of on-the-job injuries are monitored by government safety inspectors is the best answer. Please subscribe to my channel. I will give daily tips and advice on how to solve the newest LSAT questions. Hello, for this logical reasoning, I decided to use the uh, paraphrasing or rewriting it instead of uh, doing the uh, logic of variables where you utilize a, a single variable to take on a full sentence structure or vocabulary. So right now I have the uh, first sentence, our country needs as much capital as possible for overseas investors in order to sustain our economy. So basically what they're trying to say is that the U.S. needs capitals for investors outside of our nations or to keep the economy running and capital is kind of like the uh, production of goods hence we cannot afford any reduction in the amount of capital the overseas investors have invested here so they cannot allow capital um, invested to be reduced in the United States <clears throat> therefore and therefore it's kind of like a conclusion to sustain our economy, we should pass laws making it much more difficult for overseas investors to remove their capitals. So in conclusion, creating laws for investors outside of the USA are not able to remove their current capital. That's kind of like the uh, creating laws. And in the um, last video, we want our conclusion symbol. Um, I'm going to try to see if we can uh, do it again in this video as well but that's going to be the conclusion so with this information we hear we have that the u.s needs capitals from investors outside of the country in order to keep the economy running basically keep the country's um productions goods businesses operations uh sustained they're communicating about not reducing the capital investments in the usa so no reductions and in conclusion, they're communicating about creating laws for investors outside the U.S. to 
make it more difficult for them to remove their current capital. So this is going to be a weakening question here. Which of one of the following, if true, most weakens the account's reasoning? For the first one, to sustain its economy, the country needs to diverse its investment more evenly across the country's industry. No, spreading investment evenly in the U.S. is kind of uh, irrelevant to making it uh, weaker. Choice B, laws that would make it more difficult for overseas investors to remove their capital would strongly discourage them from investing any additional capital. Yes, this will damage or weaken the economy's reasoning on investors uh, to support capital in USA. And let's continue to see if there's a better answer. See, the historical period during which the country's economy had the highest rate of growth were the, those periods during which the amount of capital invested by overseas investors was highest. I'm going to say no. And the reason why I'm going to say no is because it's kind of historical, which is not relevant for making a statement weaker. In a country other than a communist, communist Passes of law that makes it very difficult for overseas investors to remove their capital have not entirely prevented the removal of capital vested by overseas investor. I'm going to say no. It keeps the same level of problem. It keeps the same level of weak at the same level. It doesn't really make it weaker. Last one is going to be E. Two years ago, the country enacted laws that placed some restrictions on the capital of the removal of capital by overseas investors. Once again, that kind of makes it slightly weak compared to choice B, with B being the better answer. This right here, laws make it more difficult for overseas investors to remove the capital, would strongly discourage them from investing any additional capital, would definitely make it weaker. And let's go ahead and show the answer. And we got that one correct. So once again, if you guys are interested in the uh, conclusion symbol for the logic philosophy, I'm going to go ahead and quickly uh, draw it for you guys. All it's going to be for conclusion symbol is just going to be three triangles. So it's going to be one, two, three. And this symbol right here will mean conclusion. So I hope that helps. Um, thank you guys very much for watching the video. For this prep test, we're going to do the uh, logic reasoning question five. And this is going to be start off with many people with access to the internet express a longing for emotional connection to global human community. So longing is going to be a strong desire for what you would uh, want to uh, attract or connect to. This longing often leads them to use the internet to learn about other cultures. So the desire forces us to learn about other cultures. However, now keyword, however, what I was taught in logic philosophy is however it means here comes the opposite. So right now we're at the point where people who use the internet have a strong desire for emotional connection. The desire focuses us to learn about other cultures. Now here comes the opposite, something that we, we, we are not uh, expecting. Learning about other cultures will probably will not satisfy their launching for the internet is used primarily for acquiring information rather than developing feelings of internet connectedness. So that's kind of the conclusion right there. The internet is for acquiring information not to develop interconnectedness. And for interconnectedness, it's going to be the state of being connected to each, to each other. So this stimulus is going to come with a question. And this question is going to be, which of the following most accurately expresses the conclusion drawn in the columnist argument? So basically, we're looking for the conclusion right here. We're going to analyze this right now. Um, so for... Answer A, it is common for people who have 
access to the internet to express a logic for emotional connections to internet human um, community no not to express it's more that they have um they use the internet to acquire information and they do not have interconnectedness so no for that one Choice B, the logic for emotional connections to global human community frequently leads to people to use the internet in order to acquire information about other cultures. No, use the internet to acquire effort, not have interconnectedness. So let's take that one out. People who have access to the internet tend to use it primarily for acquiring information and secondary for developing feelings of interconnectedness. That's definitely going to be a no. It's not really a primary or secondary. It's more of a use for and a not use for. For people desiring connectedness to global human community, learning about other cultures through the internet probably will not provide emotional connectedness to those cultures. Uh, that is well put and well re said within the um, conclusion here. It matches up perfectness with the Internet Acquired for Info mission, not interconnectedness, which is the um, what they would consider the emotional connections to other cultures. So let's go ahead and keep that. Let's see if choice E is better. When people long for connection to global human community, they tend to engage in a behavior that results and the acquisition of knowledge about other cultures but rarely produce genuine emotional connections to those other cultures. That's slightly close, but uh, E is going to be better with the um, choice. D is going to be way better with the information on the uh, internet being utilized. Uh, e here is missing the internet. If you can see uh, see if I get a highlighter here. We have the choice D, which is going to state that the internet through internet. Uh, but however, in choice E, we're missing the internet here. So choice D definitely matches up with the, our conclusion what we have. So we're going to go ahead and, and choose choice D. And for the... Excuse me real quickly before I get out of this uh, status. Uh, let's see if we have the correct answer here. Ooh, apologize. We got it correct. Let's go back and review it. And question five, choice D was was the correct answer for matching up with the conclusion that we have previously wrote down. And there we have it. And we concluded the question five with choice D. Democratic societies in which there is a widespread disconnect more often blame their politics than they do other powerful figures who are at least as responsible for the society's woes. So I have that as blame political figures, not powerful figures. This is not primarily because politicians are more familiar to people than our other powerful figures. So, not because of familiar people than other powerful figures. Rather, it's because... And let me erase this accidental highlight right here. Rather, it's because people in democratic sides feel that they have more power over politicians than they have other powerful figures. So, let me see if we can, for that second highlight, it's not because of familiar error to your popularity. And for that third highlight, for the last sentence I have, more power on political figures, not powerful figures. Now, basically, this 
is only going to apply to democratic societies all of this information that's in the stimulus now this question type is going to be what you would consider a generalization and basically just kind of like uh, consider an illustrate or a basic um, general idea so for the first answer, often the people who have the most power in a society are not the people who are generally perceived by the public as having the most power. This could be no, it's not by generalization, it's more by a politics of public figure. So let's take that answer out. People tend to ascribe more power to a person with whom they feel familiar than they to the one with whom they feel are unfamiliar no not familiar versus unfamiliar for the blame so let's go ahead and cross that one out to the extent that a person is well known to the, the public that a person is more likely to blame for the woes of society no not the well known in the public so let's go ahead and remove that we have to keep in mind it's more of the uh, politic figure D Public knowing people are often not held sufficiently responsible for a problem they cause. Um, I'm going to have to say no because people blame uh, public political figures um, versus the uh, powerful ones. Choice E. People are more inclined to blame a public-sized known person if the person is someone over whom they feel they have the power. Yes, that matches up with what we were uh, discussing earlier with the uh, blame on a public person. Matches up with the political figure. And also, um, and not blaming someone who does not have the power is the same as saying not blaming a powerful figure. So that, that answer does match up with what we uh, went over. Let's go set it had and see if we're correct and we are correct with that answer the mu mass sense generated by cosmic ray just outside of earth's atmosphere travels to earth at a speed approaching the speed of light so i have that sense as mu mass travels at the speed of light and cos cosmic ray mu mass generated in the laboratory however are nearly at rest so the way i wrote that sentence was mu mass at nearly at rest in the lab. Mu must have generated in the lab typically decays in much less time than it takes for a mu medicine to travel from just outside of Earth atmosphere to our detection apparatus on Earth. So the mu uh in the lab decays in time from out to Earth towards in Earth. If Mu Menson travels through the atmosphere at a speed approaching the speed of light typically decays as fast as they do in the laboratory, then we should detect only about one one hundredth of the number we actually do detect. Apparently, Mu Menson moving at the speed near the speed of light. So we're looking for a conclusion right here, kind of like what would come after. And um, based on this information that I have right now, the mu medicines travels at the speed of light and cosmic ray, then the mu medicine are nearly at rest in the laboratory. Mu medicine labs are decay in time from out to earth into earth, meaning that once it gets close to earth at um, surface, it starts to slow down speed. So the way I would come up or develop what I, uh, I would consider a um, logical complete for this argument is by saying, well, the mu medicine will eventually reduce in speed when traveling to Earth's surface. So that's kind of how I would have it um, phrased, and I'm kind of like the answers I'm looking for. So right now, let's look for the uh, see if answer A is it. Take longer to reach Earth than was supposed. No, um, it's not going to take longer. It's actually going to take um. That's actually going to reduce the speed as you slow down. 
B, are quite difficult to take with available equipment. No, um, it wasn't really um, communicating about it's difficult to detect with the equipment or no equipment that they had. It was more of uh, the reduction speed. Are much less numerous than previously thought. No, it's not less important than it was before. They weren't signifying that that um, the information is uh, less important than it was before. Decay more slowly than the movement almost at rest. Yep, that's what we have as far as the uh, reduction speed. It's um, it's going to uh, slow down in speed a lot more. See if the other answer is correct. Uh, e are probably not generated by cosmic rays. No, no, no. It wasn't the um, it wasn't that it was developed by cosmic ray. It was, they had two different rays, and it was cosmic ray versus uh, the laboratory ray. And the information was more on the um, reduction speed once it gets to the Earth's surface. So that kind of matches up with this choice right here, choice D, where it says decay more slowly than you must almost at rest. And let's see if we got it correct, and there we have it. Buyer. As a buyer for a large chain of department stores, I will buy a garment only if it is fashionable and not too expensive for our clientele. The evening dress from the fall collection of by Pirakee is certainly fashionable, but it is far too expensive for our clientele. Therefore, I will not buy the, that dress. So basically it's saying that for a as a buyer for a large chain of department stores, I will buy an item only if the item is fashionable, which is A, and not too expensive, which is B. So the item is A, fashionable, however it is B. So therefore, the conclusion is going to be no. So basically from this question here, the pattern of reasoning is which one of the following argument most closely resembles the pattern of reasoning in the buyer's argument. If you look at the last sentence here, therefore I will not buy that dress, you notice that you have the first two answer choices that have the exact same meaning, therefore will not, and it also says therefore will not. So those two are closely resembled with these identical to the stimulus. So between these two right here, which are closer to the most, most choice, for the one that's going to be more closely resemble the pattern of reasoning, it's going to be these two. However, uh, this material in the snow's more natural nature dealing with the water molecules, and this material used in choice B is more the clothing material utilized more in the garment. So choice B is what you are going to be considered more in position to be related to the stimulus which we just discussed and for the answer is going to be B a stuffed animal in order to pass inspection must be free of sharp edges and completely sealed this stuffed hippo is free of sharp edges but is not completely sealed therefore this hippo will not pass the inspection so this choice B which I have right here is going to be similar to the stimulus that we have on top of here so let me go ahead and put B this is going to be choice B and then this is going to be the stimulus that we have here which follows the pattern of reasoning very likely with the A plus B and then how it ends up being A plus B with a conclusion no so choice B is definitely the better selection for this information. Psychologists report that children in nine months school typically forget significant amount of schooling during the summer breaks. So psychology, the nine year olds, there's a percentage of them that are forgetting the information during the summer breaks. So some educators have proposed a 12 month schedule in which there are three month long breaks spread throughout the year. So educators propose 12 months instead of the nine months. We should conclude on the basis of psychologists research that the 12 month schedule is to be preferred in so far as academic learning is concerned. 
since the schedule will ensure that students will not forget their scheduling during the breaks. So in conclusion, we have the, the favorite 12 months forget less of a percentage of the information if that is uh, taking place. So this question is going to be vulnerable to criticism, kind of like a weakness. So let's start off with um, choice A. It relies on an unsustained assumption about the comparative width of academic and not academic learning experience. No, it relies on nine months schedule versus a 12-month schedule. Draws an attribute distinction between two groups. No, not by chance random on the differences. Takes for granted in comparing two situations that certain undesirable results is correlated with only one of them. Pretty much what we have here right now with the uh, two scenarios. D fails to show the data on which the psychologist's conclusions were based was adequately representative of children and the population as a whole. No, data was based on adequate representation. E claims to accept the view, but then rejects it in the course of argument. No, it does not accept one view, then rejects it. Between C and E, C is a better choice with the uh, two, situ two situations that's similar. Let's go ahead and check if we're correct. And we got the answer correct. The Industrial Revolution decreased the value that the society conferred on physical labor because it enabled unskilled workers to quickly produce goods they firmly took skill of craftspeople long periods of time to produce. So for that sentence I have the industrial revolution of values in physical labor. Clearly our most important intellectual skills which similar by devalued by electronic data processing technology. So for that premise I have um, unskilled workers quickly produce goods rather than skilled crafted for the uh, prior sentence. However, the um, analogy the parallel is using intelligence versus the computer as the computer is quicker. Computations that once took skill of mathematicians a long time to perform can quickly be done performed by moderate well-trained high school students using computers. So second premise, high school students with computers is are uh, considered a, um, to be in a position that are at the same level as a skilled mathematician. So we're going to go ahead and look for uh, a weakening, because this could be a weakening question. So which of the following is true most seriously weakens the argument? We have A, much industrial machinery is now designed and built with the aid of computers. Um, Slightly yes, because this shows that the, the aid for computers are going to um, assist, so we could possibly choose that. Before the electronic data process technology, improvements in mathematical techniques reduced the amount of time it took to perform computations. N no, um, it's not really about the um, mathematical techniques, more about the, uh, the uh, history on the uh, computer being able to be utilized. As quicker method. On average, skilled mathematicians tend to be much younger when they are in their most productive years than they are skilled craftspeople. No, I consider that kind of irrelevant. Um, it's more of a it's more of a system with technology and computers rather than the uh, skilled math versus the uh, skilled craft um, people with the age difference. So I'll get rid of that one. D, the intellectual skills that society value most highly are not computational ones. Uh, yes, that would definitely weaken or lessen the uh, stimulus uh, because it's showing that we gather information from a computer rather than intelligent people. It's kind of what we rely on database electronically. Uh, let's see if E is better. Electronic data process technology has been enabled people to perform some tasks that previously could not be performed at all. Um, slightly like us with people able to do new tasks with computers, but for this choice right here, choice D is more the uh, definitely one that can weaken or lessen it. So we're going to go with choice D. And we are correct with that answer. Wounds become infected because the break in the skin allows bacteria to enter. Infection slows healing. 
Often bacteria killing ointment is applied to wounds after they have been cleaned. But a study at a Nigerian hospital found that cleaning wounds that were treated with honey, which contains significant quantities of bacteria, heal faster on average than both clean wounds treated with antibiotic ointment and wounds cleaned but not otherwise treated. Question. Which of the following, if true, helps to resolve the apparent discrepancy between the results of the study and the stated facts about wounds, bacteria, infection, and healing? A. Wounds that have simply been cleaned with soap and water and not otherwise treated heal faster than wounds that have been cleaned and then treated without antibiotic ointment. No, that's kind of saying the um, the opposite. It's actually the uh, wounds that have been treated with honey that couldn't have been uh, been able to uh, faster, not the uh, just antibiotic. It has to be with honey. So go ahead and eliminate that. Choice B, the bacteria found in honey are present in much lower concentration than the concentration of bacteria typically present in affected wounds. And applying antibiotic ointment to a wound rarely, if ever, kills all of the bacteria infected the wound. No, that's it's gonna be the opposite. It's, it's that the uh, honey has the uh, concentration level on the bacteria killing. So go ahead and eliminate that because it's saying the lower concentration when it said it had a uh, significant choice C. Honey has properties that inhibit the growth of bacteria in wounds, including the bacteria that honey contains and antibiotic ointment damages sensitive wounds tissue with slow healing. Yes, this matches the explanation. It's kind of like a translation of the um, honey properties. And it also gives a, a strong assumption of the resolve as well. So this is uh, would be a better, better fit choice. Let's go see if the any choices are better. D. The high concentration of sugar in honey inhibits the, the growth of bacteria in wounds, including the bacteria contained in the honey itself. For choice D, no, it's not the concentration of sugar, but rather the significant quantities of bacteria. So it's going to be like it's not going to be the concentration of sugar. It's going to be the concentration of bacteria in honey. So eliminate choice D. E, the antibiotic ointment used in the study damages sensitive tissue in the wounds, which slows healing, but honey does not have the this effect if the wound has been cleaned. No, it's not mentioned about the antibiotic damage in skin tissue around the wound. That's kind of like an assumption. Also, it does not say honey does not have this effect. It just mentions that uh, without honey, it's known as an infection which slows healing. All that is mentioned is that treated with honey which contains a significant quantities of bacteria healed faster on average than both clean wounds treated with antibiotic ointment and wounds cleaned uh, not otherwise treated this means that treatment with honey ointment is an affection um, slow healing stage phase so any treatment without the honey and it's going to be considered in a um, slow healing phase because it's infection but the ointment with honey makes it that it can be healed and i'm going to go ahead and highlight it here the treated with honey makes it that it can be healed faster and this is um heal faster between all between both of the Clean wounds with antibiotic ointment and clean wounds with uh, otherwise out antibiotic ointment. So honey is the overall better choice on healing faster. Let's see the answer. Answer C. Honey has the properties that inhibit the growth of bacteria in wounds, including the bacteria the honey contains, and antibiotic ointment damage sensitive wounds tissue, which slows healing. If this video helped you out, please subscribe so I continue making more. LST 93, Logic Reasoning S2, question 12. This could be about our students. In order to understand this logical reasoning stimulus you, and, 
answers. You're going to have to what I consider being in a position to understand the vocabulary definitions. So here we're going to have uh, come across evoke and provocative. Uh, for the first ones could be bring and recall. For the second one, we're going to have causing anger or annoyance. Our students, great works of art evoke passionate responses in those who view them. Thus, since it is well known in art circles that the provocative work of abstract print painter Ezekiel rarely elicits intensely emotional responses in those who view them. His art is great. From the stimulus here, I have this information I came up with. Um, this could be so. This could be the art student. Great art work evokes a passionate response. Um, here is we got the def, def, uh, vocabularies and definitions de derived coming from point of origin. So this is going to be for the Ezekiel Key Riley, and that's provocative. Great artwork evokes an intense emotional response. And we have here, we're going to have two premises, premise one, premise two. Premise one, great works of art evoke passionate response. And those who view them, premise two, ER, provoke, focus of work elicits intensity emotional response and those who view them. Conclusion, EZ art is great, is great. So basically, uh, the symbol for conclusion, I'm going to do the three dots. Those three dots right there. Simplify the um what you would consider the variables for the Oh, and it went away right now. So let me see if I can go ahead and just draw it one more time. So those three dots could be the conclusion symbol for the um, this vocabulary here, conclusion. So P1 plus P2 equals the three dot triangle, which is the conclusion of really artwork. <clears throat> this makes sense with the uh, premises being P1, P2. Uh, they could be, this could be utilized as the uh, conditioning as well that uh, draws off the uh, conclusion. So for the um, the information I have in a single sentence, uh, uh, the initials ER for the, for the artist Riley. Great proactive artwork evokes intentional most response from the viewers. Um, from the viewers. So the question I have here, or I should, should be saying the question that's being brought to us, is going to be which one of the following most accurately describes a flaw in the argument reasoning. For the first answer choice here, we're going to go ahead and take our time right now. Um, it says right here, one of the premises used to support the argument's conclusion assumes the truth of the conclusion. So, once again, I hope we have the understanding of the conclusion being that uh, Riley's artwork is great. And also, what I would like to do here is go ahead and point out that um, the premises here are going to be the P1, P2, which is a great work for uh, artwork. For the guys who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about right here. Go ahead and put check mark. So, assumes the truth of the conclusion. Basically, they believe that Riley's art work, art is great. Um, we're gonna go ahead and say uh, no at this moment because we're looking for the flaw, which is gonna be the the error that's gonna be uh, more accurately describing the conditioning. And for this for this flaw here, we're gonna have it's gonna be kind of a um, more of a circular reasoning as the um, Riley's great artwork and the response of a tense emotional of his artwork could be great. Basically, uh, just because you get an emotional response, uh, emotional um, response doesn't really make your artwork great. It's kind of considered a circular reasoning or a kind of a consequence as the uh, ad harmony logical fallacy. So let's go ahead and see if we can remove that here. Go 
Question B, the argument treats a condition that is necessary for having a certain quality as if it's also be sufficient for having the quality. That's kind of like the position we're in right now with the um, circular reasoning consequent. It's kind of the um, P equals Q. Basically, uh, e, the Riley's Great Work equals response emotional intensely. Um, this response, emotional intense, doesn't really necessarily make your great artwork. It's kind of like um, what you consider a uh, logical fallacy. And the logical fallacy that could be uh, considered is ad hominy, it could be circular reasoning, it could be consequent. And when we say circular reasoning, we're basically, basically we're trying to imply here that the um, information P and Q, that it can go back and, back and forth. And basically what we're trying to say is that uh, this information right here, the response and emotion can go back from great artwork. However, that's kind of like not true. Uh, we know that the letter Q is the letter Q is not doesn't mean make it P, P. so that's kind of like the flaw here, and we know that um, great artwork it doesn't need to receive a uh, e emotional intensely uh, s res uh, information. So that's kind of why this would be a better position to argue with because from here you can use the uh, circular reasoning consequent to this. To describe the flaw in the argument. Um, let's see if the other answers are better. C. The argument misapplies a general claim about the members of a class to a typical instance of the class. No, not one member individual versus a member of a group. Remember, look for the best answer here, and the best answers we're going to look for the uh, what kind of challenges uh, him being a great artwork. D, the argument contains a general is derived from an insufficient number of instances. No, not a common gener generation derived or um, what you would consider coming from. It's, it's not really not sufficient data. E, the argument draws a conclusion that expresses a value judgment from premises that do not involve. No, the argument does draw a conclusion and it does come from premises within a statement. And uh, this right here could be the premises P1, P2. And this also could be the statement as well as P1 plus P2 equals the conclusion. So the best answer choice we have here is the argument treats a condition, the P1, P2, necessary having a certain quality as if it's also being sufficient for having that quality. So basically what you're trying to say is that um, the artwork is great based on having a passionate response and also having a uh, provocative work elicit intensely emotional response which is not necessarily true that you don't have to have those qualities to make it what you would consider a uh, great artwork and also too great artwork doesn't necessarily fall into these categories as well as um it could be uh fall into other categories necessary too as well so it's kind of the um we consider the um P equals Q, and also kind of consider that the conclusion could be a great artwork, and basically kind of considering taking this position here as necessary being the uh, having the quality of being that trait. In Northern Europe, archaeologists have discovered 400,000 years old sharpened wooden poles alongside flint cutting implements and the remains of horses. Since it is normally assumed that Homo sapiens did not inhabit Europe prior to 200,000 years ago, this discovery efficiently disapproves the widespread belief that the human-like prosecutors of Homo sapiens were entirely gatherers and scavengers and did not hunt. Question: Which one of the following, if true, would add most support to the argument? So we had the information 400,000 years ago, the wooden sharp poles remains of horses. However, we have a percentage of uh, humans, homo sapiens did not inhabit 200,000 years ago, which kind of makes us kind of contradictory, even though they said the homo sapiens uh, are the ones that, that would be able to have the uh, ability to 
what you would consider really wooden sharp. So this, what you consider um, information, debunks the um, what you consider the Homo sapiens not happening 200,000 prior. So that means that before 201 or before that, there were no such things because of the discovery 400,000 years ago. So basically what with these choices a b c d e we're going to try to figure out which one add the most support to the argument a sharp wooden poles were not used by human like precursors or homo sapiens for self-defense or to cut or transport scavengers uh cross to cost. uh this information would what you consider to be uh considered the vocabulary where we're going to consider uh, human-like precursors, that means non-homo sapiens, and homo sapiens is what we are. So that's going to be strengthener because of um, what that means is that the discovery was used by homo sapiens, and that's kind of proof that the non-human precursors were able to utilize the considered wooden poles so that does help out with the uh, homo sapiens having the uh, wooden poles discovery 4,000 years ago let's see if the other ones are good too, as well B human like inhabitants of northern Europe are known to have used stones and wooden stakes as tools more than 400,000 years ago no the uh, the vocabulary human like it's gonna be um, not homo sapiens and that kind of contradicts the uh, information with the uh, sharp wooden poles. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate that one. C. Homo sapiens evolved from a human like precursors at least 200 years earlier than is normally assumed. I'm going to say no just because it's, um, it, once again, it's going to be saying that the, uh, the human like precursors at least 200 years earlier which means that the non homo sapiens precursors were at least 200 years earlier and before that as well which is kind of like not what we look for, look for the homo sapiens because homo sapiens could be the one that had the ability to do the uh, wooden sharpened poles at that time frame not the human like so go ahead and eliminate it choice d the human-like precursors of Homo sapiens develop widely divergent pattern of behavior in the very different ecosystem they inhibited. No, this supports the human-like once again, and it also supports the human-like behavior. So that means the um, human-like precursors is going to be supported by this information on D. So go ahead and eliminate it. E. Prehistoric Homo sapiens who adapted hunting as a means of food acquisition did not abandon scavenging and gathering. No, this supports more human like again. Doesn't really support the Homo sapiens because it's going. This information is going to say that it's going to be the uh, human like before the Homo sapiens, and which is not going to uh, support the stimulus. So for this one, and process elimination process choice A answer. Sharp wooden poles were not used by human-like precursors of Homo sapiens for self-defense or to cut or transport scavenged carcasses. Politicians or public libraries are, are open only on weekdays and generally at times when most children are at school and adult, most adults are at work. Hence, most tax taxpayers and their families have few opportunities to use public libraries. Therefore... No new taxpayers supporting the library system should be approved unless the library hours are changed to better suit taxpayers and their families. Which of the following principles, if valid, would help to justify the politician reasoning? For this information, uh, do not rely on just the conclusion. If you see that it says, Therefore, so n no new tax supporting li the libraries should be approved unless the library hours are changed to better suit taxpayers and their families. 
careful because that's only relying on just what you consider the library system because you would consider in the stimulus they're, they're communicating about the what you would say public systems and the public system being available for the taxpayers as well the method I use to analyze this statement as well is going to be to uh, translate, translate, translate. Uh, if you re uh, translate the conclusion, it's going to say uh, no new tax reporting unless the library hours. Basically, what that means is going to say that, therefore, new tax reporting in the libraries should, uh, should be approved. The library hours are going to change. So... With this information and conclusion, the only thing it doesn't mention inclusion is just public, and that's why it can trick you if you don't, um, what you consider, if you just use the conclusion, you're not going to be aware of the vocabulary public that they're utilizing and the stimulus, which is going to help you out with the answer choices. So let's go ahead and uh, see let's see if we can answer uh, A, libraries and other public facilities that serve as an educational purpose should be made as convenient as possible for taxpayers and their families to use. No, nothing but improving new taxes and not only libraries and educational institutions. So let's just go ahead and eliminate that one right off the bat. B, if use of public library public facilities is made more convenient for taxpayers and their families, then new taxes supporting the facilities should be approved. No, more convenient should be choice E, is uh, what you consider uh, better wording. So hold on to that one right now. C, taxpayers who have plenty of time of opportunities to use a public facility should have to pay tax to support that facility. No, taxpayers' money should be used to support. This is kind of uh, saying the, um, the opposite of what the taxpayers' money should be used for. So go ahead and get, get rid of it. D, the best way to increase usage of public libraries is to change the library hours for the convenience of most people. No, um, this is only coming out the like only public libraries. So go ahead and eliminate it. E, a new tax supporting a public facility should be approved only when most taxpayers have ample opportunity to use the facility. Correct. Ample is going to be more than enough, so that's why choice E is better than choice B. It kind of matches the exact, the exact conclusion because if you look at the conclusion here, it's going to say, therefore, no new tax supporting the library system should be approved unless the library hours are changed to better suit taxpayers and their families. If you look at the double negative, no and unless, it kind of matches the conclusion here. And new tax supporting a public facility should be approved only when most taxpayers have ample opportunities to use the facility. Answer E. A new tax supporting a public facility should be approved only when most taxpayers have an ample opportunity to use that facility. If this vi video helped y'all, please subscribe so I continue making more. The introduction of, of mass production technique is modern industrial economies allow the owners of industries to lower prices because they could employ fewer workers, many of whom they require low training. So, intro to mass production technique, referring to owners of industrial. For those guys who are not familiar with the word employ, employ means to give work to. And industries is going to be the economic activity processing raw materials and manufacturing goods. The lower prices allow workers to buy goods that previously would not have been able to afford. So for that premise, um, we're going to go ahead and go to the next uh, sentence. But since the since jobs for workers with little training are more vulnerable to elimination than those for more highly trained workers. So basically, it's saying that the uh, conclusion that the uh, lower the prices premise few workers and those workers have low training conclusion the few workers are able to buy goods because of this uh choice and how they cho chose to lower prices so the last sentence here vulnerable to limit for work rather highly skilled 
So basically, um, trying to come up with a, um, which the final massage completes the argument. So we're going to say that the uh, owner industries are what you consider in a position to um, eliminate work and the workers have a, what you consider a uh, sense of vulnerability. So to keep up, they decided to uh, lower the prices and by lowering the prices they were hiring uh, what you consider um, workers who were low training, unskilled, and these few workers could uh, purchase the goods. So basically, trying to find a um, how would they logic and complete this, and that's kind of like the way I look at it right now, is that the uh, industry owners, basically um, because of the decision on what you consider on lowering prices, their method um, has a vulnerability to the workers on their position of having that job, kind of like their essence of security. So let's try to see if we can find a sentence here or an answer choice that kind of matches what we're communicating about. A, highly trained workers have more purchasing power in modern industry economies than workers who are less trained. No, highly skilled workers uh, do not have more purchasing power, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. The introduction of mass production techniques has decreased benefits for workers and as it has increased the profit for owners of industrial industries. No, it's close, but the benefiting being reduced or eliminated is not really what's being reduced or eliminated. It's kind of like the uh, workforce, if that makes more sense. Even the highest paid employee in minor industry economies are never able to achieve job security. No. Not the highest paid employees are the ones who are being impacted. D, a source of increased purchasing power for workers in modern industry economies are also undermining their job securities. That's kind of, kind of where we're matching up here with the owners of the industry um, having their powers of purchase. It kind of gives the uh, workers a um, undermine which challenges their uh, work position level as far as being able to secure that work for a, a commitment. So that answer kind of matches up. Let's see if E is better. The percentage of workers who can afford to purchase goods produced by modern industry techniques is shrinking. No, the workers who can pur purchase goods is not shrinking. That's kind of not the way uh, logic can complete. So between E and D, D is definitely better. I'm going to take choice E out and see what we left with the answer. And we got a correct D, a source of increased purchasing powers for workers in modern industrial Economies are also undermines their job security, which matches up exactly what we said before with the stimulus. Child psychologists, psychologists have found that most children are under the age of six are egocentric and selfish in the attitude towards animals. Ordinarily, it is only between the age of six and nine that children begin to understand that animals are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs. Hence, most children sh should not have pets until they are at least at six years old. Question. The child psychologist's conclusion follows logically if which one of the following is assumed. A. Most children who are egocentric and selfish in their attitude towards animals rely on others to take care of their pets. No, not relying on others is the assumption made by the stimulus. That's not what they're communicating about. B. Children who are old enough to understand the animals are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs should be allowed to have pets. No, addressing who rather than saying who should not. The students made more of a ch choices of who should not. See, most children who are egocentric and selfish in their attitude towards animals do not have pets. No, this was saying most in the sample group representation. Rather, we're looking for the whole group in the sample representation. Most children are egocentric and selfish in their attitude towards their pets and do not have understanding that their pets are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs. No, nothing about the ownership or non-ownership of pets. That's more what the stimulus is communicating about. E. 
The own children who should have pets are those who understand that their pets are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs. Yes, this is the only cha choice that tells us about the whole group representation in the data, also correct about the assumption made and the similars, so this would be where you consider more of the uh, correct answer based on the information what's communicating about with the ownership of the pets. Oh, answer E, the only children who should have pets are those who understand that their pets are independent creatures with their own feelings and needs. If this video helped you out, please subscribe so I continue making more. The average tax refund received by taxpayers in use tax preparation service is about 50% higher than the average refund by those who do not. So if you want a large refund, you should use tax preparation service. Which one of the following arguments exhibits flawed reason being sim most similar to the flawed reasoning exhibited by the argument above. So if you want to have a high income, you should invest heavily in the stock market. So if you want a large refund, you should use tax preparation. So far, so good. We'll leave that alone. So if your company produces publications, then you should establish an in-house print shop. It doesn't really say high publication or high income, so go ahead and remove it. So if you want lower your insurance premium, you should try to reduce your risk of lung cancer. That's communicate about going the other route, opposite, we get rid of it. So if you have a larger than average estate managed, you should get your own lawyer. Let's keep that one for now. So if you want to purchase, so if you do not want to receive calls from telemarketers, you should not purchase anything from them. That's kind of like not what this implying. This is communicating about having a large refund and also using it as a tax preparation to receive that. This is communicating about avoiding a phone call by avoiding purchases. So no. So these two are parallel for this. Let's see if we dive in a little bit deeper. Uh, a, people who invest heavily in the stock market generally have a higher income than those who do not. That kind of matches what we're saying about people who use tax preparation service is about 50% higher than those of the average, re by the average refund who do not. D, people with a larger average real estate to manage usually find it helpful to have their own lawyer. So if you want to have a larger than average estate to manage, you should get your own lawyer. So that's communicating about having a person in law as a way to have a large and average asterisk. And this was communicating about having a um, a higher income by having stock market. So this is communicating about tax preparation services, which is more of a um, materials, information, data, use like software to get the uh, program going. This is more of a stock market, which is more of a, a software program, database online to get it going, to have a higher income. And also higher income is also kind of like a, um, a larger refund and base. So this is more similar to the stimulus. So let's go ahead and choose that for now. And choice for this one's going to be answer A. People who invest heavily in the stock market generally have a higher income than people who do not. So if you want to have a high income, you should invest heavily in the stock market. Another reason why choice D doesn't work out, their community call it state, which is property, and um, their community come about having a refund, which is more of a um, considered higher income. So this one's, D is more about property, so, so that's why choice A makes it better. If this video helped you out, please subscribe so I continue making more. In an experiment, each of 200 randomly selected people was videotaped while describing action packed experts from previously unfamiliar cartoons. Half the subjects were allowed to gesture while speaking, and the other half were not. Those who gestured spoke more quickly and repeated themselves less. This indicated that gesturing helps speakers quickly find the phrase they want. Question Which one of the following, if assumed, enables the conclusion? In the argument to be properly drawn. A. 
Ordinarily, almost everyone regularly gestures when speaking quickly and with little repetitions, regardless of the topic being discussed. Choice A is going to be incorrect because it's missing the purpose of collecting data and information. It doesn't communicate about collecting the data information. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and uh, minimize it. We're looking for information that's going to be related to the um, gesturing while speaking. And this information that they're collecting for is kind of like they quickly phase what their research speakers want. They want the uh, to find the phrase as quickly as possible. Let's go to choice B. The cartoons were chosen by th those who conducted the experiment and were selected from a variety of sources. This information is considered irrelevant about the cartoons collected for the experiment. It's not really the uh, purpose of the uh, passage was dealing with the uh, selections of the cartoons. So that's kind of like irrelevant at the moment. C. Any form of behavior correlated with quicker speech and less repetition in speech helps speakers find the phrase they want quickly. This is going to be the correct answer. It's kind of uh, resummarizing the conclusion as far as uh, the conclusion is going to be indicated that gesturing helps speakers quickly find the phrase they want. And that's kind of like the goal of the researchers. They want looking for a quickly phase. And this is kind of the information what they describe in choice C. Let's see if the an other answers are better. D. Any form of behavior that helps speakers quickly find the phrase they want also enables them to speak more quickly and repeat themselves less than they would if they were not engaged in that behavior. No, this is kind of like the opposite of what they're saying. They're actually looking for the uh, quick s speech in the engaged behavior. This one's communicating on the opposite, saying not. Choice C is definitely a better word than D, so go ahead and eliminate D. E. Of the subjects who were allowed to gesture, those who spoke the most quickly and repeated themselves least were among those who gestured the most. No, the goal of the researcher is to quickly find the phrase, not gesture. This choice e is communicating more of the gesture being the goal. That's not really the goal of the researchers. The goal is to uh, quickly find the phrase the research speakers want. So for the assumption based on the conclusion or enabling the uh, information coming from the conclusion is going to be choice C. Let's see if our answer is correct. Answer C. Any form of behavior correlated with quicker speech and less repetition in speech helps find speakers find the phrase they want quickly. If this video helped you out in getting the answer, please subscribe so I continue making more. Committee Chairperson no new course will be approved for next year's schedule unless a proposal for it has already been received either by the committee or by Dean Wilson. Dean Wilson has received only one new course proposal, and all the new course proposals that the com committee has received are for upper-level courses. It has been decided that beginning next year, all upper courses will have prerequisites. Question. Which one of the following can be properly inferred if the chair's person statements are true? Right, we have the information gathered that the chairperson is going to be dean. The first premise is that committee or dean has the right to approve new courses. The second premise is that the dean receives one new upper level course so for those two uh, premises put together the conclusion is going to be starting next year all upper level courses will have prerequisites so we're wondering what can be affirmed or assumed about the statement the only thing we know right now is that prerequisite classes before upper level courses so one class must be a prerequisite meaning one prerequisite class at the minimum. That's all we could assume at this moment. A. If there are no new upper level courses next year, then there will be no new courses next year that will have prerequisites. No, this means there will be an absence of classes. B. If all of the new courses next year are upper level courses, then all of the new courses proposed to the committee will have been approved. 
this choice does not have one prerequisite at the minimum, so go, go ahead and eliminate it. C. If there is more than one new course next year, at least one of them will be a course that has a prerequisite. Yes, one prerequisite class is offered at the minimum. D. If the new course proposal that Dean Wilson received for, for is for an upper level course, then all courses offered next year will have prerequisites. None of the classes offered will be a prerequisite, so choice C is a better choice, so go ahead and eliminate D. E. If there are no new upper level courses next year, then the new course proposal that was submitted to Dean Wilson will have been approved. No doesn't contain the prerequisite course. So by process elimination, uh, the choice C is better information that could be um, what you can say match up with our conclusion at the one prerequisite class at the minimum. So choose choice C. Answer C. If there is more than one new course next year, at least one of them will be a course that has a prerequisite. Do you look Korean? Process and a bony part of the Millions elbow. The shorter the olocrinin process, the faster the forelimbs can typically be moved. Predators, mammals, just move their forelimbs very quickly when attacking prey, and thus generally have short olocrinin process. It has recently been found that the extinct mammals, megatherium, had a short Olocrinin process, hence an all probability Megatherium was a predator. Question: The argument most vulnerable to criticism on which one of the following grounds? A. It fails to address the possibility that the pro that the most mammals with shorter Olocrinin process have not been predators. This information would weaken the stimulus because the stimulus is, is saying that the Olocrian shorter is faster and basically predators need the uh, the O and S to attack and the, that, that the Mogorthians are also a predator because of this. So this question right here, A, would definitely position, put him in a weaker position. Basically, it's saying that the um, could, it could be non-predators, meaning they are not attackers. So that could be a possibility that, that the um, have not been predators as well. So let's go and select that one. See if B is better. It takes granted that the only reason predators need to move their forearms quickly is to attack a prey. The vocabulary only to attack means 100%, so there's no room for not attack. You can go ahead and remove it because that's going to actually be a strengthener because it's giving it the uh, the information is to attack. We're looking for a weakener. C, it overlooks the possibility that the megatheriums could have been a successful predator even if it did not have a short allocation process. No strengthener because it's saying that even if it doesn't have that feature, it will still consider be a successful predator. So regardless, it will still be a predator no matter what, which is just a strengthener. D. It takes for granted that on average, the olocrinin process of extinct mammals were no shorter than those of living mammals are extinct. No, that's kind of relevant with the uh, extinction of the uh, mammals compared to the ones that are living right now. If they are the same, relatively the same, how how does that really change the information? So you can go ahead and get rid of it. E. It fails to address the possibility that a longer looking process may confer some other advantage, such as greater strength. Go ahead and eliminate it. That's more of a strengthener again, as as you can tell at the end, where it says such a greater strength. So that's just meaning more strength to uh, be in a position of stronger. So the only one we can say is just choice A by simplifying saying that they can be uh, utilized for for non-predator or it can be affiliated with non-predators. So go ahead and choose A as the answer. Answer A, it fails to address the possibility that most mammals with short olocrinian process have not been predators.
If this video helped you out, please subscribe so I continue making more.